Everybody knows about World War II, but not many know about the LSTs, or the landing ship tanks, that played a huge part in the Allies winning the war. The LSTs were the backbone of the supply chain during the war. Even the great Winston Churchill said that the World War II couldn't have been won without LSTs. One of the few remaining functional World War II ships in the world, the LST-325, has become a functional relic of one of the greatest victories in history, based right here in Evansville. The LST-325 was built in the Philadelphia Navy Yard and commissioned on February 1, 1943. It was used mainly by the U.S. Navy during World War II, during the Allied invasion of Normandy, also known as D-Day, and afterwards for Arctic operations in the 50s, and then decommissioned. It was reactivated later in 1963 for use by the Greek Navy under the name Syros, and then finally decommissioned in December of 1999. The Greek Navy was going to use the LST-325 as a target ship in a mock operation as ex as its last task, but then they turned it over to the USS LST Ship Memorial Incorporation, which was made up of World War II veterans. These veterans flew over to Greece where they spent time getting the LST-325 in shape for its journey back to the United States. The crew of 29 United States LST veterans returned to the States in the LST on January 10, 2001 in Mobile, Alabama. On October 3, 2005, the LST-325 made Evansville its home, docking at a new $3 million docking facility. Evansville has known many LSTs in its time, since this is where the Evansville shipyard was during World War II. The Evansville shipyard was on the Ohio River and was originally contracted to build only 24 ships, but it ended up producing 167 LSTs and 35 other vessels. The shipyard's workforce of 19,000 completed two LSTs a week, becoming the largest producer of LSTs in the nation. The shipyard stopped producing ships in the summer of 1945 after producing 202 ships. I recently interviewed LST-325 volunteer Chris Donahue on board the LST-325. Here he is talking about the ship. In what shape was the LST when you first got to Greece? Uh, when I picked it up in Greece, it was, it was in really bad shape. Uh, the engines were pretty much shot. It was dirty and full of garbage and everything else. So it was a, took, took a good part of a year to get it up and running, really. How many crew members would the LST need to run the ship during World War II? 110, 120 maybe, something like that. Uh, 95 crew, maybe 100 crew and a uh, dozen or so officers. How many trips does the LST-325 make up and down the river each year? Usually one, uh, about a month. Hmm. Uh, now this year we'll be doing two because we got to go to dry dock in Port Arthur, Texas here January 15th. Every 10 years we got to go in have this have this ship overhauled. And, uh, that's it. Um, what was the ship's biggest mission during World War II? Well, it was at the Normandy invasion, which was uh, was the granddaddy of all invasions. Uh, but before that, it was at the Sicily invasion in Salerno, and then it was in North Africa too. So it's uh, it's rich with history. But I'd say Normandy was the big one. How many vehicles could the LST hold in its holding bay? Twenty battle-ready Sherman tanks. It could hold more than that, but I'm talking about battle-ready, ready to roll out the front door. And then uh, up here, you'd have uh, thirty some odd vehicles, anywhere from a jeep to a half track, to come up that elevator. How many of the original crew helped with the restoration and bringing the ship back? None of the original crew that I'm aware of. Uh, basically, there were, there were uh, a lot of them were Navy veterans and, and other military branch veterans. But uh, uh, like 28 of them brought it back. Their average age was 72 years old. So it, it, it was tough. You just, you just didn't sleep much. Yeah. What plans do you guys have for the LSD 325 in the future? Uh, basically to keep it going and uh, keep it keep it functional. Operator. We're the only uh, LST left in the world. By that I mean one that runs and looks like it did in World War II. So taking it out once a year and showing it to other localities is our goal as long as possible to keep it seaworthy. Chris Donahue was very well informed and gave me a lot of information. As you heard, the LST played a large role in the D-Day invasion of Normandy, 
and that the crew, when they got to Greece, had to spend a while getting the ship back into working order. Now, the ship makes one or two trips up and down the river each year and stays in tip-top shape, thanks to a great crew of World War II veterans and volunteers. These men and women take lots of time out of their lives to make sure that the LST stays clean and running all year long. Thanks to them, we have a great piece of working history right here in Evansville. Thank <laughs> you.